We will now commence with our session on plastic waste management. The session shall touch upon segregation, collection, transportation, and storage of plastic waste and channelization of plastic waste to recyclers. Plastic storage facility, including a material recovery facility and resource recovery centers, and potential opportunities for a consistent revenue stream and entrepreneurship. Joining us for session three as session chair is Ms. Apurva Vilas Patil, Executive Engineer, Swachh Bharat Mission, State Water and Sanitation Mission, Maharashtra. I would request ma'am to please take your seat on the days. I would also request our other panelists, Sri Dwapayan H, Sri Dibartha Banerjee, and Sri K. Binoy to please take your seats on the days. So we will be having uh, one hour for this session and I would request each speaker to please uh, restrict yourself to 10-15 minutes so that we have some time for questions towards the end. Uh, before we begin, I will introduce our uh, honorable chair. Uh, Ma'am has a commendable experience in preparation of DPRs, estimates and actual site execution of water supply scheme and with her contribution, Swachh Bharat Mission Maharashtra is progressing impressively. Our first panelist, Sri Dwipayan H, Chief Operating Officer Feedback Foundation, is one of India's leading providers of sustainable solution across rural and urban development projects. In the last 15 years, using the community engagement approach, Feedback Foundation has worked across many Indian cities and districts, providing capacity building, planning and implementing implementation support to various public, private and international agencies. Our second panelist, Sri Debartha Banerjee, co-founder and director of Sampoon Earth Environment Solutions, is a so uh, welcome sir. Sampoon Earth is a social uh, enterprise working towards breaking the non-cyclic process of waste management, founded by three social entrepreneurs from Tata Institute of Social Sciences one of which is Mr. Banerjee. Sampoorn Earth is working towards the vision to make the world where waste is totally transformed into a utilizable resource without any exploitation of people or the planet. Then, representing the corporate perspective, we have with us Shri K. Binoy, Regional Manager, ITC Limited. ITC, under its flagship social investments program, Mission Sunera Kal, has done truly inspirational work in solid waste management, including plastic waste. ITC's Wellbeing Out of Waste, or the WOW initiative, promotes awareness about the importance of source segregation and recycling, and establishes systems to ensure effective practice. And we hope to hear more about it on this platform. Uh, I would request Sri Abhijit Banerjee to kindly take the stage. Sorry. Uh, I, I'm sorry, we had a change in guard. Uh, I would request you, the Pine Age from Feedback Foundation, to kindly begin with the presentation. Read this and the note. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you. Uh, for this opportunity for Feedback Foundation to present uh, the way we work and uh, what we work at Pan India. Uh, I think uh, the um, the focus is about the correct infrastructure, and I think it's the right um, uh, topic, which I think never it got discussed in any of the forums, which at least I have attended. Yeah, so thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this picking up this um, uh, subject uh, particularly. Uh, then is the plastic waste management. Next slide, please. Uh, I would say that uh, it's a solid waste management. Plastic waste management, if you do a solid waste management, plastic will be managed. And that's why there's a cut there. And it's only 6 to 7% of the solid waste is plastic waste. So if you manage the whole thing, Plastic will, will automatically manage. Uh, I'm putting this particularly because many of the corporates, uh, many of the ULBs are talking about that we have to do plastic waste management. Karna hai. 
एंड देन वी से दैट प्लास्टिक वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट आप नहीं कर सकते अलग से आपको एज अ होलिस्टिक अप्रोच में लेना है आपको वेट भी मैनेज करना है आपको प्लास्टिक भी आपको ड्राई भी मैनेज करना है प्लास्टिक ऑटोमेटिकली मैनेज हो जाएगा आई फाइंड इट वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर देम टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस दिस को डिफरेंट आई नो दैट प्लास्टिक वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट गेव अ डिफरेंट रूल बट इफ यू गो थ्रू द रूल्स इट्स अ इट्स एक्सट्रैक्ट ऑफ द सॉइड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट विच हेज कम अपर द प्लास्टिक वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट एज अ रूल दैट now something with the numbers which which i want to start uh, with uh, currently uh, there are three broad i uh, will say the examples what i'm showing here uh, obviously we are working in more than 45 uh, ulbs uh, pan india there are two i'm taking example as one ward uh, agra we are working there in the seven wards and in panji which is goa uh, working there are 31 uh, wards So dry waste. Now the total day collection uh, for from Dehradun is two tons, Agra fifteen and Panjir forty nine tons. That is how the quantum varies. That's why the scales. I want to show you the three different scales on which we are operating. The dry waste more or less is the same. It's fifty percent, forty five percent, forty six percent. So more or less you are getting the same kind of uh, percentage of a dry waste which is coming there. Now the factors which I think many of them do not consider is the leakage. Now leakage is a word. It is not a negative connotation given to that. But in the circular economy, already the waste, dry waste enters into the circular economy once the dry waste is generated. So you cannot miss out that entire value chain of our rag pickers, of our of the uh, of the collection transportation team who are doing it because of their for the livelihood. So. In we measured it. So in Dehradun, uh, there's almost there's a leakage of ten percent, thirty percent in Agra, and see twenty five percent in Panji. So it talks about now why twenty five percent Panji because there are other players also who are working in the same uh, domain where we are working. So so that portion goes to them. There are many entrepreneurs that are entering into the system. So that is our the calculation. Uh, has happened because you are not alone in this entire uh, in in this entire value chain. Uh, now coming to the uh, next line, how much of dry waste actually reaching the facility? Now you can see. Sorry, I'll go to back to the. Okay, I have this right. Yeah, thank you. Now see, eighty-six uh, percent uh, is moving as a dry waste is moving in the facility. Other in Agra, sixty-seven percent and sixty-eight percent from Panji. Out of that, four percent is plastic. You see, four percent is plastic waste. Now I understand the leakage also as a plastic waste, as a higher degree of plastic waste because there is a high valuable material which rack pickers, which collection collection treatment or the collection transportation staff might be picking up. Then, like maybe like in Agra, we don't get any pet bottles because the pet bottles are already picked up by the collection team. So it's good we are not contesting with them. It's good that it's already entering in entering into the value chain. Uh, now, from that entire stuff, how much is recovered? So, reject is seven percent, twelve percent, thirteen percent. Now, this rejection happens, which we call as RDS, is a refuse dealer fuel, and we are tying up with the cement factories. When we don't have a cement factories, we are keeping it, storing it, unless and until the storage spaces is over, and then we say that okay, let's put that into the landfill because we don't know where to do that. So, and this is a challenge currently with the plastic waste management is. Managing of RDF is a huge space which is required, and it's say it's a seven percent, twelve percent. But once in a month, when it's it come it accumulate it, it accumulates, it's a huge space which is required. Maharashtra government has a mandate, very strong mandate that cement factory has to take RDF, obviously a bailed one at their own cost. So that is sorted in Maharashtra. All the sanitation parks are sorted there. In Madhya Pradesh, also sorted, but in other states, they're still trying to get sorted about. In Bhubaneswar, it is still sort sorted, 
and people and cement factories are taking away the RTS, but in other states are not. Out of the entire thing, the recovery is you can see the 93%. I will say that 93% of the dry wastes can be recovered. Uh, it's recyclable. But again, out of that, 80% have a market linkage. The other 20% in Dehradun, in 18, 15% Agra, only 25% doesn't have a market linkage. That means though at processing treatment plant at the MRS, we are taking out the recyclables. But we don't have a market to sell that. And again, that goes to the site landfill or lands up it as an RDS and going back to the cement factory. So we are trying to do that, but there are lacunas. Obviously, the market is enriching, market is coming up. For example, few months later, MLP, multi-layer plastic, was a huge problem in all our uh, centers because it was one rupee per kg, uh, sorry, one rupee per ton. Which was, uh, which was the cost, the processing cost of that one rupee per ton was coming to five rupees per ton. Then why should we actually segregate that MLP? And you know, multi-layer plastic, every day or the often it's a common plastic which is used uh, in the every walk of life. And that's an amazing material, I will say. It's a, it's a technology to keep your snacks fresh, but it doesn't have a recycling opportunity. Currently, there are some players who has entered into it recycling the multi-layer plastic. Uh, we are tying up with them, but still uh, the technology has to come and it has to scale up. Yeah. So, myself representing Feedback Foundation, we do not only work in solid waste management. Uh, we have a resettle resettlement and rehabilitation programs. Open sanitation is a forte. Uh, assessment studies, currently we have launched a construction waste study with Godel's properties. They have funded that entire assessment and we have done that study there. Rural sanitation, solid waste management and water supply. So these are the sectors on which we work. But I'll be keeping it uh, to the solid waste management here. Uh, there are 14 states currently uh, we are working. Uh, and you can see the list where it's all with government bodies because we prefer that because they are the machinery who can put up machines or infrastructure in place. Uh, so these are some ongoing projects and completed projects here. Uh, we do have uh, like bilateral, multi uh, multilateral agencies, corporates, and ULBs on which we are working with. Now coming to it, solid waste management. We prefer the model of demand and supply. Uh, so demand means the IC programs because by the IC program. And in the first half, you might have known that what you meant by IC program, program. I'm not elaborating there. The awareness, the behavior change, the reduction of the waste, all this comes under IC program. program. So what is that? What is happening? You are, you are increasing the demand of the segregated waste. Because once the waste is segregated, it is sorted. So that is first side demand. That is the citizen's role, role to do that. Obviously, there should be a push from political leaders, from councillors. Uh, from the executive bodies, those parts are there. The second part is ensure the supply. So there are few agencies or few corporate they say that you have to IC. You don't have to do IC. If you have to do IC for a moment, if you have to do IC for a month, they will take segregation. They will take the challenge. Lete, citizens will segregate. Segregation is not a challenge. That also full way segregation. It's not a challenge at all because there are IC tools. It's a behavior change. It needs 36 months for the entire citizens to get mobilized and do that. Some corporates say, one year of money, I have so much money. One year of money, nothing will happen. 36 months, it's required consistent hammering. Then only a behavior change starts happening. So there's a time, there's a tenure for that. If it's done, I have an infrastructure trading. What is the ULB? I don't have any problem. Other you will be the problem here that the sanitation inspector himself doesn't know how to design it. He doesn't know how to take the technical sanction of that design. He doesn't know how the fund will flow. So then we understood that gap in the entire system, and that's why we have onboarded urban planners, architects, civil engineers in our team now. That is a support which one has to give to the ULBs. Now 
we become the agent of them and we go to the government officials we take the technical sanction of the of of the, of the drawing of the of the facility we get approved by the district collectors the fund whatever it is and our civil engineers are deployed on the site to get the material recovery center built as what we want to operate so that is a value chain that's a gap what i will say in the in the system paise bahut hai yuvi ke paas paise bahut hai koi bhi corporate ko infrastructure development ke liye paise lene ki zarurat nahi hai chote mote jo kuch kuch ulps hai jo thore bahut crash crunch hai unke paas unko wo support de sakte hai par i will say major ulps what we working there they have funds what they don't have is the operating funds that is a gap in the entire system aap usko sustainable banaiye aap nikal jaiye wahan se so we talk about construction facility mrf mcc collection of transportation now collection of transportation four way segregation hona chahiye that's a uh, in the last session we understood that yes biomedical waste has to be segregated separately so there are ic programs for specially for the segregation of biomedical waste it is a four way system so we must not talk about three way system but we each on and, and we operate in a four way and and the amount of maintenance of it there are few pics you can see that every whenever we get the get the vehicles we kind of modify it usme aap dekhoge na 50 50% hai dry wet matlab 50% nahi hota hai aur na volume wet kam hoga aur volume dry zyada hoga 50 50% na logic kidhar se aaya hum sab kuch jake welding welding karwa dete hain क्यों चाहिए मुझे हजार के जी हजार के जी कलेक्शन होने होने मतलब एक टन कलेक्शन होते होते सुबह अगर छह बजे शुरू करते हैं तो वो बारह एक बज जाएगा तो फिर प्रोसेसिंग कब होगा थ्री फिफ्टी फोर हंड्रेड दैट इज दैट इज के जी विच वन ट्रिप टेक्स फॉर तो मुझे टाटा चाहिए क्या फिर तो मैं बैटरी ऑपरेट व्हीकल से भी कर सकता हूँ दे हैव कैपेसिटी बट दे आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट इट बट ये एज अ एक्सपर्टीज वी गो एंड एंड टेन ऑल दीज थिंग्स टू द यूएन बीज Three more minutes to go. Thank you. The Waybridge, the IC programs. This I'm skipping. Uh, there are few uh, snapshots of our MRS. It's a very primitive kind of thing. Uh, primitive kind of setups. This is in Madhya Pradesh. You see, this was the legacy. Was the I will say uh, the legacy waste ground. We treated it. Uska then we made that in the park. And that's the facility where it is running now. This is Chakrata. You can see the dump. This is high up in Uttarakhand, the high altitude. You can see the dump there. It's a Google Google images. Abhi bhi wo Google ne change nahi hua hai. And this is what we built. You can see this. It's a facility. It's an it's a piece of art now. And that becomes a can. It's a cantonment area. So, wahan pe parties, wagera, sab cheez abhi wahan pe honge. Also, I have shared the government 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 uh, government convergence. You see, eighty five lakhs they have put there. I am telling you that there is no money. No, there is no money. This is uh, this is under construction. The cantonment board. See, the pits are there. So it's all all art design. So see that that was the legacy waste. We treated it, and now this this is the one. What is there? This is Dehradun again. A very GVP जो बोलते हैं garbage vulnerable point ये एक private plot था जहाँ पे लोग फेंकते थे उसको हमने clean किया उसी plot का इसको हम rent देते हैं ये एक councilor का plot है उसने बोला कि इतना अच्छा काम आपने कर दिया आप renter भी लीजिए इस plot को और मेरे पूरे board को सही कर दीजिए ये उसका example है We are running short of time so we'll be grateful if you could please tell me thank you uh this is malanpur again primitive one get we are trying to get up uh, make it running this is nagra this is dhanpuri in in madhya pradesh this is all decentralized model 
दिस इज पालस वाली असम अ वेरी स्मॉल पीस ऑफ लैंड दिस इज पंजे गोवा Uh, this is under construction in Nagpur. We are taking the technical sanction from the government now. Uh, this is good news. Yeah, thank you. Right. Requesting Mr. Banerjee from Sampur Nath to please start with the session. I have a presentation too. Can you put that up? Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here. Um, thank you for the opportunity to give to speak here. Um, so after the session, <laughs> we all taking our time. So I'll try to keep myself very short and probably focus on the points which I can add to the conversation which has been happening. Um, so, 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 thank you to Doiban also to talk about the MRFs. Uh, we also work in Goa, and we are very inspired at times to see the facilitated Panji, uh, which Feedback Foundation operates as well. Um, so, so at Sampunath, we are what we are. We are we started as a waste management company uh, almost ten years back, more than ten years back. And uh, right today, what I'm trying to focus on the plastic waste management aspect. of it of course so so we started off as a waste management company where we started off giving solutions to bulk waste generator housing societies corporate campuses then we started setting up material recovery facilities for municipal bodies and uh, when we realized that just the mrf setting up is not enough because uh, if we look at the waste value chain it it's it's very long so we generally break it into into five different levels uh, so we start off with the household generation then the waste collectors uh, which can be waste pickers the ferry walas the municipal workers then they sell it to the local kabadi wala they also at the supply chain then they sell it to a larger dealer or aggregator who works with a single category of waste so aggregator will work only on um rigid plastic somebody will only work on pet bottles somebody will only work on paper cardboard then it will they will also sub segregate the waste into five to 10 different categories then it will go to a recycler and uh, when we started running mrs one of the challenges we saw was there were some categories of waste which we could not find the right markets and usages so we went on to set up recycling units as well so last year we set up five recycling units Uh, primarily in the western part of the country uh, so so mumbai maharashtra so mumbai nagpur nasik goa and gujarat these are the five locations that we set up our recycling units in. and um, and now we as a waste management company work across the value chain and i guess that is something that everybody has been speaking also uh, like uh, waste management solutions might not work in piecemeal approach it needs a complete ecosystem solution so so when we work we start working with the households where we will bring awareness campaigns drives ic campaigns to increase the segregation at source we will start working with the collection agencies the panchayats municipal bodies to make sure how they can do better route mapping better collection can happen dry waste for for example in goa we work with a lot of panchayats where the waste is not collected on a daily basis the dry waste it's collected on a weekly or even biweekly like two fortnightly basis as well so 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 this kind of um, work with the with the waste generators as well as the collection bodies how to do proper route mapping and all so that also becomes important then the waste of course comes to mrfs or treatment facilities but but in india the thing is that we already recycle a lot the mrfs we are talking just recently in the last 5 years the word mrf has become popular but india from before has been recycling almost 70 to 80% of high valuables actually if we look at the recycling rate in india though the though we see waste lying everywhere um uh, a train ride in mumbai is like a garbage ride like uh, it's all everywhere but in spite of that india recycles probably the highest across all the countries in the world like few like it's 
like uh, rigids, like PET bottles, many rigids. We recycle up to 70 to 80 percent. Newspaper probably we have one of the highest recycling rates. There's so many things we recycle primarily because of the informal scrap markets. So they are the invisible environmentalists who have been driving the recycling industries alive. So when we look at to, into the into the facilities, the material recovery facilities, we cannot ignore the informal waste collection, segregation, and processing facilities as well. And when we talk about uh, the supply chain, there is scrap dealers, aggregators, and informal recyclers who have different facilities doing different things into the value chain. And uh, one of our focus is how do we bring them as part of the value chain, how they can also become organized players, um, how local workers can form self-help groups, can become organized to form micro-organizations who can also become service providers and play a role in the value chain. Uh, we cannot have one company to manage the whole waste, um, even in a city. It, it's an aggregation of different efforts of lots of different organizations. So, yeah. And then the waste, of course, goes to... Uh, so, a part of it goes for incineration and a part goes for recycling. I'll just talk about the Goa story quickly, uh, one of the examples. So, we work in two talukas in Goa where... So, so where we have... Uh, 30 village panchayats and three municipal councils. And we have created a hub and spoke model where all the village panchayats collect their waste in their in their own uh, collection centers. And then from that collection center, then the waste comes to a bigger material recovery facility. And, uh, and that material recovery facility then does primary segregation. It does broad segregations like paper, plastic, metal, glass. And then that heads to us uh, aggregation or sub aggregation point uh, which is which which is uh, which is in Harvalim. so that facility again sub segregates some categories of waste primarily plastics uh, and then we also have a recycling unit which further processes the plastic into pellets and granules i have some products i can show you later uh, so so in this process um, while it's an entire ecosystem right from the source to the recycling chain one thing which has really worked for us and which is the more important part which I want to focus on is we have been able to develop local self-help groups, uh, waste workers, organizations who now take a lot of responsibility in processing the waste themselves and taking operational responsibility. Like uh, all the MRFs have a model where we have now self-help groups which take the operational responsibility to manage the facility. So we have slowly because the waste markets are also very informal, when we are trying to formalize the informal markets, we also took one part of the informality alongside with us, which is we don't have an employee-employer relationship at many of our facilities. So we come in as a marketing support, as a data management, as a as an overall ecosystem. We will support them, work with the municipalities and all that. But the operational responsibilities within the plant, how to manage the plant, how to deploy, whom to where, and all that. Many things are taken by the groups themselves. And, and these projects have really become successful for us. Uh, we, um, and we have worked these projects in both the models, with the employee-employee relationship, as well as in a free uh, manner. And we have found the free manner is much better. It also makes the workers earn a lot more. They get a more dignified opportunity. And it also generates a lot of local uh, livelihood also, which is not very much that we see in waste. We see a lot of migrant people, but this incentivized structure, we have been able to em employ a lot of local people as well. So this is a clip from the MRF. Like you can see it's a mostly women's work. So on the left hand side, this is the plastics, low value plastics, which we are recycling in our facility and all that. Um, um, this is some snaps of the collection from the homes, how uh, the QR codes and all that happen. Uh, of course, the facilities, this facility was set up in association with Sodiji. So all the things that you, so we have those things, we practice those like the fire safety, health camps, um, um, government program registrations. Now we are also doing a lot of government program registrations like Ishram registration, which gives 12 for government benefits immediately and all that. So. So, so we have a program also, now this program has also found financial sustainability where we used the corporate fund as a seed fund 
but eventually with uh, we have been able to find raise the awareness level to a such level uh, that the waste that we get we have a very high amount of recovery which is able to sustain livelihood of 30 35 people without any operational gap support right now in one of the projects um, yeah and and the last uh, bit before i close so i keep bringing the focus back to the informal waste markets which is very close to our heart in india it is estimated that almost like if we take battery non plastics and everything almost 10 crore people across the value chain is employed into the non into the informal waste markets so of course india is a informal uh, 90% of our workforce is informal textile probably forms one of the highest 10% out of this is textile but waste also forms a very high percentage uh, if we see the whole supply chain not just the waste because but the scrap dealers the intermediary facilities the manufacturers the products manufacturers so all of them the dismantlers if we put them all it's a lot of people estimated anywhere even 5 to 10 crore people minimum 5 maximum 10 which is a lot of people and now with the change in this policy infrastructure where lots of formal waste managements or companies are coming into existence so we have lot of money flowing in uh, through investor routes and all it's also very important that how this existing 10 crore people don't lose their livelihood and can get integrated back into the ecosystem and play a, still play a very important role which they have been playing till now so so we have been doing different kind of things uh, with them across uh, supporting across the social environmental and financial needs so we of course work with them to form give identity cards organize them into self help groups uh, find business opportunities which micro organizations can take up um, also trying to make them compliant many of the scrap so for example in goa recently the pollution control board has come up with a waste collector license which is i think an intermediary way to make scrap dealers also pollution certified and we are working with many such groups to make sure that how their land can get legalized how their operational processes can become uh, certifiable how the the waste after sorting when they're selling that also comes into the pollution chain so all that we are doing so so and we think this is also a very important aspect of the whole ecosystem i think this is all i'll break here right now maybe some questions we can take up later thank you uh, thank you we'll have the questions right at the end i will now uh, request minoy sir from itc to share the corporate perspective with us very good afternoon to all uh, first of all i would uh, like to thank isc fiki and ews to organize this knowledge workshop because it's very important uh, one we and the way it is been structured is also good you have government to look into you have uh, development partners and also the people who are implementing in ground and then you have corporates uh, also but many a times it's the other way it works in the waste management in the space it's uh, i represent itc so itc uh, is been uh, uh, one of the fmcg company we also uh, we are very closely associated with all the recyclables which you are also discussing because many of those recyclable end up with us we are into large one of the largest recycling packaging industry and i think uh, that is a proud moment for me and the presentation can be loaded so in the meanwhile while the presentation is getting uh, the just a presentation load or i will try to both uh, have hindi and english simultaneously so i will touch upon on six things and how we have tried it in field so first is the concept of decentralization fortunately uh, this ulb panchayati raj institutions all those things are decentralized to element of decentralization is there so i will also look uh, touch upon how that element of decentralization we have tried to explore in our uh, mechanism of waste management second is i will also touch upon institutions which are there uh, then i will uh, try to look into the element of human because bahut jyada key ho jata hai is pure setup mein machinery to aa jati hai magar jab tak human element ko hum address nahi karte is aspiration if you don't address their aspiration it would not be worthwhile talking 
technology anyway my, uh, all the uh, my other colleagues have touched upon technology i will try to uh, touch upon a, some sort of innovation which we have tried it in field we are planning to scale it up it's in pilot thing then uh, how we are into communication and the data thing so when i was just entering in the morning uh, sivasta sir was telling about three crore user charges collection so that was something which rahul sir when i was there he said that ki you have a very good app why don't we get the whole bihar integrated into it today the day a user charge is been collected it is been integrated into the app and rahul uh, sir the smd sitting in stable can understand ki kitna paisa aaj ke din mein hua hai so i just put some low cost technology to the high cost technology the first is the mrf center which we generally talk and the second one that tin shed is also a smaller mrf center so more you decentralize more the recovery happens and here is one if sometimes if you visit haridwar you can uh, uh, visit chandi devi temple you will understand how a green temple is been implemented you see a composter lying uh, there and then there is uh, then there is uh, this recycling unit which is there so it has been stored and then it has been transported uh, uh, to the location base location so i will touch up on the key tenants of my program so basically one of the key tenant of my program is partnership idc has always believed in partnership either with state with isc like organization with knowledge partners and the implementing partners many of our, my partners are there uh, I don't want to say the way so this is what I was asking. How about I? I am seeing with the management smiling there. So second thing is people centric. Our whole program is people centric. I'll just show some photos and the word which I said decentralization. We have run the program complete solid waste management program in a decentralized way. I will also touch upon some of those cases in between. Contributory uh, was the key uh, phenomena. The user charges which. Sri Vasu Sir was mentioning that is the success of a program until and unless you don't have a contribution, it doesn't work. In. And finally, and very important, the underlying phenomena is operation and maintenance. सब अच्छा हो जाएगा, सब बढ़िया लग जाएगा, मगर वो continuous चलेगा नहीं, तो फिर वो रुक जाएगा. So that operational maintenance is the key terminology which has to be there. And operational uh, maintenance will only happen when you have day one exit strategy. जिस दिन आप दूसरे उसी दिन अगर आपका एक्सिट स्ट्रैटेजी नहीं है देन यू विल बी स्टक अप ऑन सो सम ऑफ द आई टी सी वाश इनिशियटिव और सैनिटेशन कॉम्पोनेट वी वर डूइंग सैनिटेशन कॉम्प्लेक्स दिस वॉज सम द नंबर विच आई एम शोइंग इज डायरेक्ट इंटरवेंशन द फिनेंसिंग पार्ट वॉज ऑल्सो देयर वेर देर वर इन्वॉल्विंग फंड इन्वॉल्व एंड दिस मनी हैड हैड ए मल्टीप्लाइंग इफेक्ट we are into community uh, sanitation we have around 122 community sanitation complexes built uh, 2000 plus school toilets been built and uh, waste to landfill reduction in 15 percentage mai usko janbooj ke nahi touch kiya is slide mein because this is ever increasing with the partnership which we are doing so this is a, uh, this is something which is the day to day daily basis how many households we are touching around 18.4 lakh With uh, different partnership, I have a community composter. Because the first thing I think Feedback Foundation was also mentioning until and unless you don't touch upon the larger component, you are not touching upon the resource recovery part. So the main major component of plastic recovery or recyclable recoveries, you have to remove the compostable material first. If it is not been removed at the source, then you you will be dealing with more expenditure. second thing uh, one more innovative thing is the green temple thing i would uh, seriously invite people whenever you visit haridwar or any south indian temples you should visit this understand this green temple model the waste is managed at their source not just wet waste even plastic waste second is around uh, 50 lakh households covered through wow program wow program is something more related but we collect recyclable it is been processed and it goes back to the market and uh, this is some of those M- mou we have 10 mous with different state government uh, and also the recent one is the partnership which we have currently with isc we are uh, one of the uh, largest i would take that opportunity with due permission from isc that we are one of the largest uh, partner in this lighthouse initiative we have 36 out of that 
a thing and i think almost all the states we we have uh, this project implemented and one of the key success which i say is not resource recovery i say one of my, the key success of my project is 15 percentage less than 15 percentage going to landfill if it fo- doesn't focus that baki sab cheeze chalti rahengi so i just wanted to touch upon the key elements or the infrastructure which has been written so the some of the key element is one is decentralization you should have a very strong panchayati raj institution or a mohalla committee uh, at the urban or rural setup if that doesn't happen if that decentralization doesn't happen the whole element the key element you might be missing second is waste picker this is the human element without this human element your whole program you will have a very beautiful infrastructure everything is there but the waste picker is not aware the waste picker is not he is not as uh, he doesn't have an aspiration to do it because he's not into good business so how do you keep up his aspiration that part is very important when you look into one of the key element third key element and which i think is been covered in the presentation uh, is the waste processing unit or mrf center so this can have uh, this, there can be levels of uh, waste processing unit from the very basic at a mohalla level to a very larger block level or whichever level you want based on the thing so the, this waste, uh, this mrf works on uh, 3s principle one is you segregate second is you store and third is you sell so ye din s ke liye hi uh, mrf centers ya waste processing unit however you want to so if these three function doesn't happen there then you have to see so the level of segregation increases the value addition because everybody was talking on waste value chain so value addition improves so that is how this thing i think this is something which has been continuously dis- uh, discussed the value chain or the key processes we also follow the same thing in our programs with partners so this was something which uh, uh, mr srivastava was mentioning in the morning that's the jiran model i just have uh, i didn't want i was expecting that uh, bihar model to be discussed in the morning so i took up mysore model so kyunki aap log bore nahi ho jaye karke so uh, this was something which we have tried it in mysore so in mysore we have an mou with government so there is around 256 uh, gram panchayat which is there out of that 180 gram panchayat has taken up solid waste management in that 180 gram panchayat 120 gram panchayat is been run by sg now sg runs the model so first to six months government pays it and then we have to deliver create a model now the best part of uh, this thing is now sg since they have to recover plastic they have to manage wet waste and if they have to manage wet waste and recover more plastic they have to focus on segregation so they create an awareness strategy they do and when you go these days Uh, under srlm programs or nalam program all women member in a panchayat is a member of srg so it is very easy in that way to deal with this situation they run the program they ensure user charges is been done and all the mechanism which uh, uh, mr srivastava was discussing there is an mou done um, it can be also shared the one which he was mentioning for bihar which we had done uh, so the whole role which any ngo take sub it has been run by SRG. so NGO ka role kya hai? SRG ko sensitize karna, uske upar cascading mein jada mehnat karna. So it is very easy way. So day one, you have an exit protocol. And you are only working on strengthening these SRG. So this is one sort of small innovation. I will not take so much pride. We just have started something like this. And now the second step is we have a, a person who can develop the material, who can develop this uh, press boards. Uh, we are working with SRGs now to create a value addition on it. It can multiple things can can happen with it. It can be so. This is how we uh, coordinate with startups to create. So startups generally gives us an agility because otherwise, सब कुछ हम लोग कहाँ सोच सकते हैं? There are a lot of people who have brain who can invest on these things. So what we do, we create a problem statement. We employ people who can do it and do some sort of minor investment, and they can run the show in later stage. so this is one such thing uh, with uh, mlp so it takes 10 percentage mlp and rest is uh, the uh, uh, single use plastic which doesn't have much market into and we have tested this in iit roorkee also and this is how we templateize uh, so our major role is communication uh, that was one of the key parameter which we wanted to touch up we try to templateize everything uh, templateize a waste journey through games templateize how an mrf center should look into templateize what all are the because one of the important thing aap mrf center bana dete hain do's and don'ts hota nahi hai usme rate chart hota nahi hai ye sab cheezon ke upar we create a lot of focus upon 
So this is yet another thing which I was mentioning. Human, human is very important. Until and unless that human aspiration is not been addressed, अभी हम लोग जितनी भी बातें कर रहे हैं वे स्पीकर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से है वे स्पीकिंग जैसे बात हो रही थी वे स्पीकिंग इज जस्ट ए पार्ट टाइम इट हैज टू बी अ पार्ट टाइम बिजनेस इट कैन नॉट बी अ फुल टाइम बिजनेस फॉर अ वे स्पीकर सो एंगेजिंग हिम और हर इन टू अदर एक्टिविटीज इज समथिंग विच वी आर ट्राइंग इट आई जस्ट हैव कैप्ट एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सारनपुर दिस अ म्यूनिसपालिटी मॉडल सिमिलरली वी आर ट्राइंग इट इन अदर थिंग सो वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट से तो पैसा आता ही है उसके अलावा साढ़े तीन हजार से पंद्रह हजार तक जाता है so 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 he 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 gets 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 user charges he gets around 2000 rupees from waste waste selling selling and then this is the the additional thing we also link him to the all social security scheme uh, either it is health uh, and dashboards regularly we track dashboards because one thing which uh, Mr. Uh, was also mentioning was corporate brings in data management strength तो वो चीजों के ऊपर ही हमारा ज्यादा फोकस रहता है यहाँ पे भी waste collectors are also trained trained in ehf standards they are trained in uh, uh, how to handle hazardous waste so this is some of those uh, thing which we do and uh, i uh, i just have kept some of the numbers in the last hour scale uh, we are into 41 districts in india and in 11 uh, states uh, believe me this whole districts if i say ek do project nahi hai almost aadha district hoga hi us project mein Uh, this is just some numbers, uh, which is a day-to-day -day basis uh, thing. Uh, what was our learning from ISC uh, thing or from uh, the Lighthouse Initiative or other thing is that kid? Since many of other corporates are also there, and since we have, so we say we implement pilot with scale. With that pilot with scale, this is our learning. First learning is that kid, कभी भी कोई भी push करे, please अपना budget पैसा मत लगाइए इसमें. आप ISC करिए, sustainability के ऊपर focus करिए. Please don't do it. It would, because then there is no exit, exit protocol, and it is not possible to scale it up. If you put your own money for MRF, there would be there would be people, there would be consultant who would be talking to you. ये करो, वो करो, ऐसा करो, वैसा करो, बहुत अच्छा दिखेगा, बड़ी बातें होंगी. वो वहीं तक वो बड़ी बातें होंगी. There would be islands of excellence. You may not be able to. And if you seriously want to do, let government do it. And they, नहीं तो वो scale ही नहीं होगा. Second thing is that, but government have that strength. I think everybody was speaking. Government के पास बहुत पैसा है, and they don't know how many times what happens is that कि they I mean to say at the ground level, at senior level when you meet you understand कि it's there, and many times visionary leaders you get very less visionary leaders. So it is very much important that कि you have to focus upon and that has to be your key riding principle. Second thing is that कि you need to work very closely with government and and that that is our success everywhere when we listen to them and they they understand the field more than us more than any of us because they have always worked in scale aur aap khud jab ek bar scale mein jayenge na possible nahi ho pata hai wo ek aap bahut acha create kar payenge but government has always done everything in scale so when you do they, that strength you need to leverage there that strength you need to leverage then designing vcc uh, communication communication also you have to be data driven communication so that is where kyunki bahut baar vcc bana lete hain hum log aur hum randomly bol dete hain sab jagah karo you need to have a need assessment kis jagah pe kab wo karna hai that is where as a corporate you does because as a corporate i know how my strategy for marketing i have a very beautiful strategy for marketing we need to take that learning from as a corporate to this sector so that is what i think is very key Uh, in this area, market linkages, market linkages, no difficult things. No, specifically, the rest of plastic. For example, everybody was mentioning informal sector. For so many years, they are working. They will continue to work. Major issue is this MLP and the other plastic which doesn't have any value, and it is not possible to uh, go on reduce, re reduce. Wala strategy is very hard to work. But in this uh, consumer in some world reduce wala bahut difficult hai so you have to also look in circularity thing how do you flow it back to the system and finally local solution there are lot of local solution we have tried it uh, kuch bahut chota lagega magar it is jaise plastic mlp se bag banana all those things there are local solutions it can be employed in, but that has to be thought at local level itself innovation is very important uh, into this Yeah. Yeah.
So this is my last slide. Uh, okay, clear. I had a barcode in that. If you want, you can just scan and understand what exactly am I talking. There are two good animated uh, ladies who were talking. You can just look in if I uh, yeah, scan karke aap dek sakte and this is in uh, I think uh, in Bihar ke us mein hi. Uh, so they are talking on this is a good communication thing. She will also explain what is plastic waste management, how it has to be done. And then there are a smaller part of all it all communication strategy. We have created such uh, QR codes where you can just click it. So chalte firte log bhi kahin baat dek ke wo hote hain. So that is it from my end. Thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. I would now request Apurva ma'am to kindly conclude the session by sharing Maharashtra's journey on the Swachh Bharat mission with us. Thank you. Presentation, please. Uh, I'm Apurva Patel from uh, SBM team, uh, Maharashtra, uh, Grameen. Uh, presentation, please. पहले मैं अपने महाराष्ट्र का एक प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट का जो ब्लॉक लेवल पर हमें स्वच्छ भारत मिशन में करना है उसका एक और दे देती हूँ तो महाराष्ट्र में हमारे 351 फिफ्टी वन ब्लॉक्स है थ्री फिफ्टी वन ब्लॉक्स में हमने हर एक ब्लॉक में प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट प्रपोज किया है हर एक का ब्लॉक में हमने प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट प्रपोज किया क्योंकि वैसे गाइडलाइंस थे कि हर एक ब्लॉक में आपको एक प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट प्रपोज करना है उसके लिए आपको सिक्सटीन लाख रुपीज मिलने एस बी से तो उसके हिसाब से हमने थ्री फिफ्टी ब्लॉक में प्रपोज किया उसके डीपीआर ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टी परसेंट रेडी है उसका वर्क ऑर्डर हो गया है तो उसका थ्री फिफ्टी वन ब्लॉक्स में हमारे एटी सेवन वर्क अभी स्टार्ट है और जब पिछले महीने में श्रीवास्तव सर हमारे महाराष्ट्र में सर ने विजिट की थी सर ने हमें एक सजेशन दिया जो हम जो हमारे फोकस में नहीं था यही कि अगर हम हर ब्लॉक में एक प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट करो करेंगे तो आगे जाके उस प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट का सस्टेनेबिलिटी नहीं रहेगा उसका ऑपरेशन मेंटेनेंस नहीं रहेगा वो वैसे ही पड़ा रहेगा और एक्चुअल में वो सर का जो सजेशन था वो हमने जाके फील्ड पे चेक किया लास्ट मंथ में ही हमने विजिट की थी स्टेट से मानगांव में एक सीरियस प्रोजेक्ट था प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट का तो उन्होंने रायगढ़ जिले के 40 विलेजेस कवर किए थे उसमें अर्बन का कुछ भी कवर नहीं किया था 40 विलेजेस कवर किए थे उन्होंने वहां पर एम सेंटर किया था एम सेंटर में उनसे हमने जब बात की तो जब जैसे इन सब ने पॉइंट्स निकाले हैं जैसे आईएसी करनी पड़ेगी उसके बाद प्लानिंग करनी पड़ेगी उसके बाद तुम्हारा स्ट्रक्चर होना चाहिए तो ये अर्बन के लिए ठीक है ये रूरल के भी अप्लाई होता है लेकिन रूरल में सबसे बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर है ट्रांसपोर्टेशन अर्बन में क्या होता है कि अर्बन में आपका लिमिटेड होता है सिटी के लिए सिटी के अंदर आपको ट्रांसपोर्टेशन फैसिलिटी होती है जैसे सर ने कहा कि अर्बन के लिए बहुत पैसा है तो अर्बन के लिए उनके खुद के वहीकल्स होते हैं जो हर रोज हर डेली उसका पिकअप करते हैं वेस्ट का तो हर रोज उसका सैग्रिकेशन होता है ग्रामीण में वैसा नहीं होता हमने मानगांव में विजिट किया मानगांव में विजिट के दौरान हमें यह पता चला कि डेली उनका पिकअप नहीं होता है वो शेड्यूल पिकअप करते हैं जो फोर्टी विलेजेस उन्होंने कंसीडर किए हैं उसके हिसाब से वो शेड्यूल पिकअप करते हैं एक व्हीकल जाती है उन्होंने रूट भी डिसाइड करके रखा है कि आज आ, मतलब एक वीक के बाद एक व्हीकल जाएगी अराउंड टेन टू फिफ्टीन विलेजेस कवर करेगी और उस दरमान मतलब उन्होंने एक व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप क्रिएट किया है और उस पर शेड्यूल डालते हैं कि इस इस तारीख पे ये व्हीकल आपके गांव में आने वाला है तो उसके हिसाब से वो गांव वाले वो प्लास्टिक कलेक्शन करके रखते हैं कलेक्शन के बाद अगर कलेक्शन नहीं हुआ तो वो व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप पे शेयर भी करते हैं कि हमारा कलेक्शन नहीं हुआ आप मत आइए तो इस हिसाब से उन्होंने प्रॉपर प्लानिंग की उसके हिसाब से वो व्हीकल हर वीक में उस रूट से प्लास्टिक कलेक्शन करता है प्लास्टिक करेक्शन करने के बाद 
उस एम सेंटर में वो प्लास्टिक का सेग्रीगेशन होता है तो रूलर में ये बात है कि उस कलेक्शन के लिए जो ट्रांसपोर्टेशन लगता है अभी वो मानगांव का जो प्रोजेक्ट है वो सी एस आर फंडेड है तो सी एस आर का फंड एक्स्ट्रा का उनको डालना पड़ता है क्योंकि रेवेन्यू तो उनको जीरो होता है यूएलवे में वो प्रॉब्लम नहीं होता है क्योंकि उनके पास खुद के व्हीकल्स होते हैं उनका कलेक्शन का लिमिटेड होता है सिटी के अंदर तो ये प्रॉब्लम ग्रामीण में है तो मानगांव में जब हमने विजिट किया तो ये सारे प्रॉब्लम के बाद हमने स्टेट लेवल पे हमारी थोड़ी पॉलिसी चेंज की हमारे अगर 87 सेवन काम शुरू भी हो गए हैं तो बाकी के जितने बचे हैं उनके लिए हमने आ, आगे की पॉलिसी डिसाइड की थी अभी ये वही स्टेप्स है जो सर ने बोला है कि एक तो हाउस होल्ड लेवल पर सेग्रीगेशन होना चाहिए उसके बाद हाउस होल्ड लेवल से वो विलेज के सेग्रीगेशन शेड में आएगा वहां पे प्लास्टिक काच धातु वगैरह जो कहे उसका सेग्रीगेशन होगा उसके बाद अगर वहां पे कबाड़ी वाले वगैरह प्लास्टिक लेने के लिए तैयार है तो वहां से वो ले जाएंगे या फिर वो प्लास्टिक हमारा ब्लॉक के यूनिट में आएगा ब्लैक ब्लॉक के यूनिट में आने के बाद वहां पे सेकेंडरी सेग्रीगेशन होगा उसमें वो डिटेल में सेग्रीगेट करते हैं उसमें वो रिसाइकलेबल प्लास्टिक अलग करते हैं पेट प्लास्टिक अलग करते हैं एच डी उसमें भी यह है कि जो आगे का लिंकेज है उनके भी कंडीशन होते हैं कि प्लास्टिक अगर हमको कलेक्ट करना है तो वो किस टाइप का होना चाहिए अगर जैसे अपने इसके सॉफ्ट ड्रिंक्स की बॉटल्स होती है वो जो कलर में आती है तो वो कलर का वो अलग उठाने वाला अलग होता है जो हमारे पानी की बॉटल होती है वो उठाने वाला अलग होता है अगर वो मिक्स हो गया तो वो भी वो उठाता नहीं है तो उसके हिसाब से ब्लॉक लेवल पे उसका सेग्रीगेशन होगा और उसके हिसाब से फिर आगे फॉरवर्ड लिंकेज होगा तो हमारे स्टेट की अभी पॉलिसी ये है कि हम स्टेट से गाइडलाइन जारी कर रहे हैं कि अगर आपका सफिशिएंट प्लास्टिक कलेक्शन हो रहा है और जैसे कि तेरी अर्बन जो जिले है हमारे जैसे मुंबई के बाजू में थाने हैं पालगढ़ है या फिर रायगढ़ पनवेल है तो उसके उस जगह पे ये प्रॉब्लम नहीं आता कि डेली प्लास्टिक जनरेशन वहां पे बहुत है लेकिन जैसे नंदुरबार गढ़चिरौली ये जो डिस्ट्रिक्ट है वहां पे प्लास्टिक का जनरेशन इतना नहीं होता जैसा मैंने कहा कि वो शेड्यूल रूट पे जाके वो पिकअप करते हैं वैसे वहां पे करना पड़ेगा और वहां पे हर ब्लॉक के लिए एक प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट काम नहीं करेगा तो उसके हिसाब से जैसे श्रीवास्तव सर ने कहा था कि अगर आपको सस्टेन करना है आगे जाके आप अभी बांध के रख सकते हो लेकिन आगे जाके वो चलेगा नहीं तो इसके हिसाब से हम गाइडलाइंस हमने ऑलरेडी दी है कि आप क्लस्टर लेवल पे कर सकते हैं उसके हिसाब से दो डिस्ट्रिक्ट ने हमारे ठाणे और गढ़चिरू ने क्लस्टर लेवल पे पीओमयू ब्लॉक प्रस्तावित कर दी है तो ये वही स्टेप है कि विलेज लेवल पे सेग्रीगेशन कैसा होगा ब्लॉक लेवल सेग्रीगेशन सेंटर का हमने लो कॉस्ट एक शेड बनाया है जो हम अभी डिस्ट्रिक्ट को शेयर कर रहे हैं इसके हिसाब से आगे जाके मतलब इसमें भी आपको बायोडिग्रेडेबल वेस्ट नॉन बायोडिग्रेडेबल वेस्ट इसका सेग्रीगेशन उसी शेड में आप कर सकते हो वहां पे आप कंपोस्टिंग कर सकते हो तो एक पोटेंशियल अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर रेवेन्यू सिस्टम हमारे मानगांव के विजन में हमें यह भी बात पता चली कि अगर आपको फॉरवर्ड लिंकेज करना है और उससे रेवेन्यू जनरेट करना है तो क्वांटम ऑफ प्लास्टिक भी मैटर करता है मतलब अगर आप ब्लॉक लेवल पे एक ब्लॉक पे एक प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट करोगे और अगर आपका उतना प्लास्टिक नहीं जनरेट हुआ और वो उठाएगा नहीं मतलब लिंकेज जब आप फॉरवर्ड लिंकेज करोगे तो उसको उस क्वांटिटी में चाहिए तभी तो उठा नहीं आएगा अगर उस क्वांटिटी में नहीं मिलेगा तो वो भी आपका प्लास्टिक लेने नहीं आएगा तो उसके हिसाब से क्लस्टरिंग में ऐसी होनी चाहिए कि आपका उतना क्वांटम जनरेट हो कि आगे वाला लेके आने के लिए तैयार हो नहीं तो अभी क्या हो रहा है कि अभी लेके जाने के लिए बोलते हैं तो वो बोलता है कि आप खुद लेके हमारे पास लेके आओ मतलब वो भी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन का कॉस्ट उनको ही करना पड़ता है भाई अपॉर्चुनिटीज में आ, हमने क्या किया है कि डिस्ट्रिक्ट वाइज हमारा पॉलिसी चेंज है प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट के लिए जैसे रायगढ़ ने क्या किया है कि एनजीओ इन्वॉल्व है वहां पे 
जैसे सी एस आर में उनमें स्वदेश फाउंडेशन इन्वॉल्व है जो क्या करती है कि रायगढ़ का जो प्लास्टिक कलेक्शन है वो करके देती है प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट तक और प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट वो ब्लॉक लेवल के एस चलाते हैं ना, हमारे नाशिक जिले में क्या किया है उन्होंने की एजेंसी एम्पेनलमेंट किए है पांच साल के लिए कि प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट जो यूनिट बनेगा वो पांच साल के लिए वो एजेंसी के लिए चलाने के लिए देंगे तो ऐसे डिस्ट्रिक्ट वाइज वो पॉलिसी चेंज होती है अभी इसमें सबसे मेन फैक्टर ये है कि सोलह लाख तो एस ग्रामीण के लिए मिल रहे हैं लेकिन आगे का जो ऑपरेशन एंड मेंटेनेंस है उसके लिए जो कॉस्ट लगने वाली है वो सबसे मेन फैक्टर है सर ने जैसे कहा कि अर्बन के लिए वो हो सकता है क्योंकि अर्बन ही खुद ही अर्बन ही खुद ही उसकी मालिक होती है मतलब वो शेड का या प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट का ग्रामीण में वैसे नहीं है जब हम प्लास्टिक स्वच्छ भारत मिशन ग्रामीण में प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट बनाएंगे ना तो वो आ, क्या बोलते हैं उसको आ, जो हस्तांतर बोलते हैं हस्तांतर करना होता है जैसे ग्राम पंचायती का एक आधे यूनिट बनाए तो ग्राम पंचायत को हस्तांतर करना पड़ता है मतलब उसके आगे की जवाबदारी ग्राम पंचायत की होती है तो इस फैक्टर में प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट में जब हम प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट ब्लॉक पे बनाते हैं तो वो हस्तांतर किसको करना है आगे जाके उसकी जवाबदारी किसकी होगी उसके लिए को रिस्पॉन्सिबल होगा यहाँ से ग्रामीण की शुरुआत होती है मतलब अगर वो तालुका लेवल का प्रोजेक्ट है और जिस ग्राम पंचायत में वो प्रोजेक्ट बन रहा है वो ग्राम पंचायत उसकी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नहीं लेती और अगर कंबाइन में आ, सारे विलेजेस मिलके वहां पे एक प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट बना रहे हैं तो विलेजेस की एक कमेटी करनी पड़ती है और वो कमेटी के थ्रू चलाना पड़ता है तो विलेज की कमेटी करके उनकी बॉडी करके वो चलाना मतलब सबसे मुश्किल काम है तो वो एक ग्रामीण में जो हमारा प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट बनाएगा वो उसके लिए एक सबसे बड़ा प्रॉब्लम है कि ऑपरेशन मेंटेनेंस के लिए रिस्पॉन्सिबल कौन है कौन होने वाला है ये हम डिसाइड नहीं कर पाएंगे सेकेंडली कि ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट मतलब कलेक्शन से लेके फॉरवर्ड लिंकेज तक जो हमको प्लास्टिक पहुंचाना है उसकी कॉस्ट कौन बैर करेगा तो ये सारे स्वच्छ भारत मिशन ग्रामीण के प्रॉब्लम्स है अभी आ, आ, सर ने जैसा बोला कि संपूर्ण अर्थ और फीडबैक फाउंडेशन अर्बन के लिए इन्वॉल्वमेंट है तो मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी अगर आप ग्रामीण में भी थोड़ा इन्वॉल्वमेंट देंगे और इसका सोल्यूशन अगर हमको मिल जाए क्योंकि अभी तो हमारी इतनी एक्सपर्टाइज नहीं है और मुझे नहीं लगता कि किसी ने ग्रामीण में किया है ओके तो महाराष्ट्र में तो हम पॉलिसी चेंज कर रहे हैं क्योंकि जैसे आज मैंने जो प्रेजेंटेशन देखे उसके हिसाब से मेन तो ऑपरेशन मेंटेनेंस है और हमने हर ब्लॉक के लिए प्रस्तावित तो कर दिया है लेकिन वो चलेगा नहीं जैसे श्रीवास्तव सर ने हमको सजेशन दिया था उसके हिसाब से हम वो पॉलिसी अभी अप्रूवल से पेंडिंग है तो ये ओवरऑल महाराष्ट्र का हमारा पॉलिसी है प्लास्टिक मैनेजमेंट यूनिट के ऊपर तो थैंक यू Thank you so much, ma'am and sirs. Uh, we can take one or two quick questions from the audience. Yes, ma'am. You can turn on your mic, please. Hello. Yeah, I have one question that uh, when we talk about the usage of uh, plastic as a fuel, we talk only about the cement cleans. But then it is about burning of plastic at higher temperatures so that UCs are not emitted. Is my understanding? I may be wrong. So then, can we uh, check out that can the plastic, the same plastic which we are proposing for cement cleans, 
be used in other furnaces like uh, because thermal power is one of the major uh, industry or major investment in our country. We have iron uh, manufacturers or many other industries also require similar furnaces which uh, uh, have a temperature of about 1400 degrees Celsius or above. So can they be checked out? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, that is one example. Uh, it's uh, it's in Chakrata. So there was uh, there was a huge RDF after like le processing of legacy waste, and uh, we couldn't connect with the near above nearby cement factories, not the thermal factories because they were very far, and we couldn't find a jaggery uh, plant or the brick kiln plant. And you know this entire RDF got. Uh, incident, I will say, it, because it has the same temperature, the big kilns also have the same temperature, we found out, and it got uh, burnt in those local brick kilns. So, similar that is not only an option, uh, but again, uh, we have to uh, wash their furnace, uh, or I will say sanitize their furnace again, uh, the brick, brick kiln furnace, that is a deal what they what they told, because it was a plastic and we managed or and they didn't know how to do that. We told that we supported them. We tension them. If something is going to happen, then we will do it. If something is going to happen, it will Are there any studies regarding other furnaces? If you have any material, can you share, please? Uh, currently, no. I pretty okay. one, we, we could uh, have but, a... Uh, like in West Bengal, we were trying to, but most of the industries in West Bengal, uh, like they claim to be cement industries, but only grinding is done there. The clinker manufacturer is not happening there. So they don't have a clean. And similar problems may be faced in multiple areas. So uh, if uh, through government uh, papers or uh, uh, geos, if we could uh, go uh, have multiple options for RDF, it would be great. Do uh, you want to know three things, sir? क्योंकि आपका काफी जो प्रेजेंटेशन हमने देखा तो काफी टेक्निकल दिया आप आपने जो एक बात बोला वो बिल्कुल सही बोला कि यूएनवी के पास धन की कमी नहीं है पैसे की कमी नहीं है वहां कमी क्या है कि उनके गवर्नेंस सिस्टम को थोड़ा स्ट्रेंथन करने की जरूरत है सबसे बड़ा चीज है कि वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट उनको प्रायोरिटी में नहीं रहता है नली बना दो गली बना दो ये सारा चीज उनके प्रायोरिटी में है बेस्ट के लिए उन लोगों ने क्या किया आउटसोर्सिंग कर दिया है तो जो आउटसोर्सिंग जिन लोगों ने ये कर रहा है उन लोगों का काम केवल है कलेक्शन एंड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन और उसमें जाकर के डंपिंग यार्ड में ये कर देते हैं तो ये एक बड़ा बिग चैलेंज है कि बेस्ट मैनेजमेंट को लेकर के यूएलवी के पास अच्छा दूसरा चीज उनके पास टेक्निकल स्किल की भी कमी है उनके पास उस तरह के कुछ ये नहीं है कि जो वहां पर टेक्निकली उनको सपोर्ट कर सके तो हमें लगता है कि आप लोग जैसी जो एजेंसी है उनको वहां पर उस चीज पर सपोर्ट करने की जरूरत है सिग्रिगेशन की अगर बात करते हैं तो हम लोगों ने एक अप्रोच अडॉप्ट किया है क्योंकि बिहार में हम लोग आगाखा फाउंडेशन के साथ विगत पांच साल से काम कर रहे हैं तीन नगर परिषद में तो वहां पर हम लोगों ने काउ अप्रोच अडोप्ट किया है कलेक्ट ऑनली वेट वेस्ट हम लोग सप्ताह में पांच दिन केवल वेट वेस्ट कलेक्ट करते हैं तो जब कलेक्ट केवल वेट वेस्ट कलेक्ट कलेक्ट करते हैं तो ऑटोमेटिकली सोर्स लेवल पर सेग्रीगेशन हो जाता है जो हाउस होल्ड के जो लोग हैं वो केवल वेट वेस्ट देते हैं पांच दिन और जो ड्राई वेस्ट है ड्राई वेस्ट घर में भी पांच सात दिन रह सकता है उससे कोई ये नहीं है तो उस अप्रोच पर हम लोग काम कर रहे हैं का अप्रोच पर काम कर रहे हैं दूसरा चीज है कि स्टेट जो भी स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं उनका इंगेजमेंट जरूरी है खास कर, खास करके बेस्ट मैनेजमेंट में तो ये सारी चीजों पर हमको लगता है कि काम करने की जरूरत है और सही बात है कि अभी और दूसरा चीज एक और जानना चाहेंगे कि चूंकि हम लोगों ने जो एक एम आर एफ सेंटर बनाया वो पूरा लिगेसी बेस्ट था वहां पे तो लिगेसी बेस्ट वहां से उसको हटाने में काफी सरकार ने कई बार मैपिंग करवाया लेकिन काफी कॉस्टिंग आ रहा था कई बार उसका मैं हम लोगों ने भी काफी तो वहां पर कैसे ग्रीनरी डेवलप हो सकता है अगर उसमें कुछ टेक्निकल आप लोग की जानकारी हो 
हमने तो फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट के साथ में उनको उनको विजिट कराया लेकिन उन्होंने कहा कि जब तक ये जो लेगेसी बेस्ट है इसको हटाएंगे नहीं तब तक वो ग्रीनरी डेवलप नहीं हो सकता है तो उसका क्या तरीका हो सकता है अगर किसी को अगर इसमें ये हो तो काइंडली हमको सजेस्ट करें बहुत टेक्निकल प्रोसेस है लेगेसी वेस्ट को ट्रीट करने के लिए पहले तो कैलकुलेशन बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट है क्योंकि डेंसिटीज अलग अलग होते हैं हर लेयर्स के डेंसिटीज अलग होते हैं तो आप कैलकुलेट कर लेते हैं उसके बाद पहला प्रोसेस होता है बायोडेमिनेशन का उसको विंड्रो फॉर्मेशन कर देते हैं उसको फिर सुखाते हैं उसके जो इंट्रैक्ट गैसेज है उसको छोड़ उसको निकाल देते हैं उसके बाद आपका बायो बायो डेमिनेशन प्रोसेस होता है जो आप ट्रॉमिल से उसको फिर आप सेग्रीगेट करते हो वो चाहते हैं कि सेग्रीगेशन निकलता है इसको करने के लिए बेस्ट टाइम है आफ्टर मॉनसून उसके बाद आप सब सारे कैलकुलेशन कर लीजिए आफ्टर मॉनसून से uh, आपको बताता हूँ कि जो जिस तरीके का आपको प्लानिंग होना चाहिए उसमें एक ट्रॉमिल चाहिए दो ट्रॉमिल चाहिए तीन ट्रॉमिल चाहिए क्यों एक ही एक ही सीजन में आप कोशिश कीजिए उसको खत्म करने का तो लास्ट स्टेप है वो है सॉइल रिमिडेशन स्टेज वो रिकवरी के सॉइल को रिज्यूबिनेट करने के लिए तो फिर आपको फिर टॉप सॉइल कहीं और से निकाल के वहां पे लाना होता है तो ये बहुत टेक्निकल प्रोसेस है इसमें आपको मैं जानकारी दे दूंगा इसके लिए और और आसान भी है मतलब ऐसा कुछ रॉकेट साइंस नहीं है इसमें हमने बहुत जगह पे किए क्योंकि लेगेसी वेज को हटा के हम सैनिटेशन पार्क हर जगह डेवलप कर रहे हैं डीसे लैंड की कीमत है तो उस लैंड की कीमत उसी तरीके से देख लें थैंक यू सर वी आर नाउ कंक्लूडिंग दिस सेशन एंड थैंक यू सो मच मैम एंड सर्स फॉर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग योर वैल्यूएबल टाइम टूडे थैंक यू वी विल बिगिन राइट अवे विथ आर फोर्थ टेलीवरी सेशन ऑन ग्रे वाटर मैनेजमेंट एंड वी जस्ट टेकिंग टू मिनट्स टू सेट अप द प्रेजेंटेशन एंड स्टेज We are now commencing with our session on grey water management. This session shall attempt to explore the various technological options and models at community level and household level interventions. It shall also explore potential revenue models and incentive for entrepreneurship. And we have a distinguished list of panelists for this session, and I would request uh, all of them to please take the dais. We have Shri Harsh Vardhan ji from CDD Society. श्रीकांत नावेकर जी फ्रॉम निर्मल ग्राम निर्माण केंद्र वी हैव श्री अभिजीत बैनर्जी फ्रॉम फिनिश सोसाइटी सर आई यू हियर एंड आर फोर्थ एंड फाइनल पैनलिस्ट इज श्री अंकुर सिद्धाना फ्रॉम एथ सी फाउंडेशन सर कैन आई प्लीज हैव यू ऑन स्टेज थैंक यू so i quickly uh, introduce all our panelists uh, beginning with shri harshwardhan he is ceo cdd society and shri harshwardhan has close to two decades of experience and he has always been committed to the cause of inclusive growth and prosperity of rural india right from starting his journey with gujarat cooperative milk marketing federation better known as amul and with cdd he continues this vision in bringing integrated nature based inclusive water and sanitation solutions to improve quality of life of communities we have with us shri abhijit banerji director of financial inclusion improve sanitation and health also known as finish society under his leadership finish society has worked is extensively in the area of waste management in 12 states across the country and has given effective and replicable models for waste management including waste treatment some of which we hope to see today then we have with us 
श्री श्रीकांत नागरिकर फ्रॉम निर्मल ग्राम निर्माण केंद्र श्री नागरिकर हैज क्लोज टू फोर डेकेड्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल सैनिटेशन हिज एरियाज ऑफ एक्सपर्टीज आर रूरल सैनिटेशन टॉयलेट टेक्नोलॉजी सॉलिड एंड लिक्विड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट and he has worked with leading development agencies such as the world bank unicef water aid india iihs and knowledge link and finally we have with us shri ankur sardana senior lead from hcl foundation at hcl foundation he leads a team of uh, development professionals and through which hcl is doing optimal interventions across agriculture education health infrastructure livelihood and water and sanitation in several villages uh before we begin the session i would like to state that uh, our panelist shri harshvardhan might have to catch a flight and he might be leaving us uh so but we'll start with his uh, presentation first and foremost and if the audience has any questions for sir we will take it right away instead of waiting till the end of the session so i'm uh, requesting uh, harshvardhan sir to kindly present A good afternoon. So as we wait for presentation to load up, I will take this opportunity to introduce Sedidi Society. So Sedidi is a NGO which is the consortium of around twenty-two NGOs from different parts of India, and uh, we are basically engineering-led NGO. So we have got more than fifty engineers from reputed institutes of India, and who all have one fundamental belief. that nature is the best engineer and we also believe that most of the modern problems we are facing is because of the rupturing of the bonds between the nature and the humans so this is about sedity society and now can we move to next please so we have that drinking water and the next session is on the black water and we have got uh, then gray water but black water is never black How many have seen the black water is black? But then why we call it a black water? And grey water is never always grey. It is turbid. It may be yellowish. It may be translucent. It may be like white yellow. Anyway, sometimes grey too, but we call it grey. So the whole point of liquid waste management is that we have to take care of two things, which are contaminants and pathogens. So pathogens create health hazards and contaminants create environmental hazard. Can we next please? Do you have this one? So drinking water, if we see from the pollution angle, drinking water has got biological oxygen demand of two. These are the CPCB standards, and black water has biological oxygen demand of minimum ten thousand, which goes up to fifty thousand. And in between, whatever is there, it is called grey water. So in that sense, grey water has got a huge range, a very huge range. And the problem stems are just different. So just to give a very gross analogy, somebody has got a cough. Somebody might have a viral fever with cough. And somebody might have TB. You will not give same paracetamol to all of them. so different pathogens and different contaminants require different treatments and that is one thing which has to underlie every intervention so this is a rural indian context whatever we say gray and black are septic they are not most of the places the septic tank overflows goes into storm drain most of the places sometimes even the fecal matter gets directly disposed into water and storm drains About seventy-two percent of children because such material is disposed into environment, and this intermixing of black and grey water is a common phenomenon. And hence, you will have pathogens and uh, contaminants even in grey water in India. Only the stents will differ depending upon the dilution effect. How much water is there available in the System in the village which is flowing through the storm drain. Otherwise, the concentrations are there. So to feel that our grey water is purely only grey is not true. And also, grey water has got also evolving many, many parts of a uh, constituents of grey water. We say grey water are considered black water in other countries like Kerala. 
we consider it grey water, but because of its high concentration of contaminants, it is considered as black water in many countries. So the solution has to be seen accordingly. Now these are some of the data points. How the drainage and disease burden is increasing because of waste poor water management in the rural India. You can all have a look at these are nothing to this figures are self-explanatory. Now this is what is happening. So many places we are going with the complex technology in rural areas, which are simply not working. So this, this is a modern conventional system which has been set up from five kilometers from our office in Bangalore. And within six months, it is start functioning. Now there is algal growth. So it itself, the treatment system has become bimar or sick. It itself needs some treatment. So these the complex solutions need not be operated in rural areas. If we do, the seeds or solutions are so given in the fifth day first, day one only. So this is what I was saying. So grey water has got different constraints. They have got light grey water and dark grey water. If you include kitchen, waste, it is the concentration of waste will increase. You need to have different treatment system for that. And why that is important? Because a very, very high public risk, health risk. And I will come to that. So these are the, some of the figures. These figures are slightly dated. About five years ago, it was per capita generation was about 55 liters, 48 liters in India. The figure will go up as JGM comes into being because the water consumption, water limited will increase in the villages. So these are the, some of the characteristics of black grey water. And you can see that kitchen and laundry water, the COD and BOD, two, which are the two key constraints for defining grey or the concentration, are as good or as high as black water. So if it, and others it is lesser, but the contaminants become high if you add kitchen and laundry water in the grey water. 